So, AMD has just launched their Ryzen 4000 series mobile CPUs for laptops. And as far as I know, the only laptops you can get right now is exclusive to ASUS for these CPUs. Maybe for this month or another month or two. I'm not too sure about that. But everyone's been reviewing the ASUS G14 Zephyrus laptop, which is all the hype these days. But I have access to this ASUS Tough A15 gaming laptop from ASUS. So this is not an ROG line, but it's their Tough Gaming brand, which, you know, used to be a high-end brand from motherboards, but it kind of trickled it down to make it like a mid-range slash budget gaming laptop brand, and also, you know, some motherboards as well, and GPUs. But besides the point, this has the, a the new AMD Ryzen 7 4800H CPU, which is based on the Zen 2 architecture that powers the Ryzen 3000 series desktop CPUs. So don't get that confused. This 4000 series laptop's CPUs from AMD is the Zen 2 architecture, the same as the one on the Ryzen 3000 series on desktop. It's just that AMD made two iterations of the Ryzen Zen Plus architecture on mobile, which is the 2000 and 3000 series, and that's why we get this. But the thing is, the 4000 series is not more advanced than the desktop 3000 series, it just now finally has the Zen 2 architecture which is a very impressive architecture. And I have always thought that it'll succeed in laptops because Zen 2 architecture on desktop can't really clock as high as Intel, but Intel takes a lot more power as well. So I've just been thinking that on laptops where power is limited, AMD doesn't even need to clock that high because the Intel chips can't even clock super high on laptops anyways. When you see like 5 gigahertz boost on Intel CPUs on laptops, that's probably only like a one second boost. So the sustain is never going to be as high as the boost. That's why these processors are super interesting. Now here on the ASUS Tough A15 laptop with the 4800H, uh, well, this is more of a budget oriented laptop. So it's not aluminium on the bottom, but it doesn't feel too cheap as well. Although it does look kind of cheesy with all the vents on the bottom. But it is supposed to help cool it better, as you can see there's like hexagonal vents on the bottom and well a pretty high feet for the bottom uh, so that it stands quite high. It does not have the hinge like on the Zephyrus where you open it and it'll lift up. So it's just a normal laptop hinge. But other than that on the outside you can also see that the design is pretty nice. There's an actual aluminium top on top of the laptop on the screen so that helps with the build quality feel. It does feel pretty good. It's just not ultra high quality like maybe the Zephyrus ones are. But then again, this is a $1,000 laptop. Now what I got here is the Ryzen 7 4800H paired with the GTX 1660 Ti. So this is not the top of the range RTX 2060 model, which you can get as well as this on this thing, as well as on the Zephyrus, which is kind of odd because you would think the Zephyrus would have a higher end GPU option, like a 2070 or something. Maybe they'll come up with that. But yeah, with this laptop, this is the only one available on Amazon last time. Now it's sold out apparently, but this was the only one available just after its launch date that you can just purchase and have it shipped. In fact, my friend actually is the one who bought this laptop and he let me made a video of this. So thanks to him for that. But because of that, I also can do a long term test on this. I'm just going to do a quick review on this thing. Well. You can get this, he got this within a day of ordering this, so that's pretty quick, but it's just it's now out of stock. For the RTX 2060 model, you have to wait for a pre-order on Amazon, so that's not that good. That's why he also went with this option. I told him 1660 Ti is pretty good, especially because if he wants a budget option, that's why he got this for just uh, $999. This is really not a bad option, you get 16GB of RAM as well as a 512GB NVMe SSD installed. And you do also get a NVMe slot that ex you can populate as extra on the bottom, on the inside, as well as some uh, RAM slots that are actually dual channel, so you can take them out and replace them with a higher capacity kit if you want to, unlike the Zephyrus, which only has one slot that's actually replaceable, so it'll be imbalanced on that one. Now, for the ports on this laptop, can see that it does have some good selection of ports there's the rg45 ethernet port which is pretty important for a gaming laptop a bunch of usb ports probably usb3 and an hdmi port and it supports 4k as well and a usb type c and an audio jack as well as a power jack and on the right side there's 
pretty much nothing. It's just a USB slot and also, well, nothing. Just a speaker over here. It's, I thought it was an SD card reader, but it isn't. It's just a speaker. And you also have a Kensington lot. So on the back, you can see these massive vents and you can actually see some like orange looking vents on the bottom. And well, this is actually copper fins, you guys, because on the Asus Strix laptops, well, I've seen that they just put like some orange uh, paint on their aluminum fins, which I mean, it still looks pretty cool, but it's not actually copper like this one because I'm pretty sure they're trying to cram as much cooling as possible, trying to cool this eight core CPU, which is what makes this laptop super interesting because it's only 999 and you get an eight core CPU and a GTX 1660 Ti and with ideal sporting specifications of 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM as well as 512 gigabyte of SSD and VME storage. Now, if you flip it open, you can also see that it also has another benefit to the Zephyrus, which is that you have a webcam right over here, as well as, well, the rest is pretty similar to Zephyrus, I think, in my opinion, in terms of look. Although I think the Zephyrus has a higher build quality material on here, where this one, because it's a budget laptop, it just has like a plastic cover on top. But the keyboard, you still get the RGB LED lighting. It's it's not addressable, but you can change the color however you want in the Aura software and the Armory Crate that you get from this laptop. And then you also get, you know, some stickers and a Ryzen 7 sticker. What I find kind of funny is that on this laptop, the GeForce GTX sticker is not even that big. They're just, you know, it's just, you know, no big deal. The GeForce GTX is with this big sticker. It shows the features, but they have their own Ryzen sticker, which I think is the most important part of this laptop anyways. So I'm thinking this laptop is going to be really great for content creators because I tried Cinebench on this. So if you run Cinebench, which I'll show, well, if you run Cinebench or anything heavy, you really should plug it in. So that's what I'm going to do right now. This does run pretty fast because it has the eight core Ryzen CPU. It's actually not even that far off from my desktop with the 6950X, which is an aging Skylake HDT CPU overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz. Well, this thing scores higher than the first gen Ryzen 1700X. It scores just above just above 4,000 points on Cinebench R20. I'm just gonna let it run and let you guys see. There is some background now, so it's not as high as possible. But again, even with this doing a very high load and using the performance fan settings, it's not even that loud. There is some fan noise for sure, but again, you're trying to cool an 8-core 16-thread CPU, which is the main dish in this serving of a laptop. This thing is pretty impressive for what you get for $999. And with the GTX 1660 Ti, you can pretty much see any laptop reviews that has that GPU is going to perform similarly, pretty much. It has 6GB of RAM on a 192-bit memory bus, so it has plenty of VRAM to handle most modern games at maximum details. It's just that... This is not the RTX 2060, which is even faster, but if you don't need RTX, like you don't find that a very useful feature and you just want to save a couple bucks, which is quite a lot actually, it's almost like just over 200 bucks difference between this model and the RTX 2060 equipped one, then you can just get this model, which is much more economical and it still plays pr games pretty well. In terms of performance, it's going to be more like a desktop RX 580 type of performance with this 1660 Ti and also maybe like a well, GTX 1660 performance on the desktop, not the TI, because that's a laptop, it runs at a lower clock speed. But yeah, that's the performance is pretty much as expected in terms of gaming-wise, because this CPU is not behind from Intel in terms of IPC and gaming performance. Because on laptops, Intel can't boost up as high as on desktop, so they don't have that big of an advantage. It's just that you have more cores for the same amount of money that you're spending on an Intel laptop, so... I don't see how this is a bad thing, this is a win-win. Plus I've seen people test these laptops long term with the battery life and everything. They can get like 8-9 hours out of this using like normal tasks, not gaming because that would kill the battery pretty fast. So if you're just using this for like browsing or like doing your work as a normal laptop, this can actually give you ultra book levels of battery life almost from a gaming laptop, which is pretty mind-blowing in my opinion because most gaming laptops previously you only have like one or two hours of battery life on the laptop 
even if you're not gaming because you know the cpu is a super high powered version and the gpu is super high powered version so that's not that great but this thing even with the 144 hertz 1080p monitor which is you know it's not super accurate it's not the best thing for content creators but it does have pretty decent color it's actually still has good battery life even with 144 hertz that's probably also because it has the ryzen uh, equipped with the vega graphics on the cpu itself so it switches to that for low power modes kind of like how intel's with N nvidia's optimal switching thing works similar to that to lower the power consumption when you're not using the dedicated gtx 1660 ti these are not the best speakers but i think they go pretty loud and they sound pretty decent for a laptop it's not like it's a desktop speaker obviously you can't compare it to that but this will get to true gaming sessions and stuff on the road and for the trackpad and keyboard the problem is that the keyboard is kind of like flexible on the plate itself that's probably just because the laptop is made out of plastic so you can see it flex but the keyboard itself feels pretty decent it's definitely better than like app top it's definitely better than like apple's not app top it's better, better than apple's uh laptop keyboard which are the you know butterfly keys that feels like typing on a screen honestly but yeah it's not like it's a super high quality but it's a decent one for this price point again just a thousand dollars 999 and you get all this hardware which is pretty insane in my opinion an 8 core cpu gtx 1660 ti 16 gigabytes of ram 512 gigabytes nvme ssd and all the goodies on a gaming laptop like you know rgb keyboard and whatnot and the trackpad is also pretty nice in my opinion from the short time i've been using it uh but yeah this is a very solid laptop as you can see here the main attraction is the cpu i also tried to overclock it using ryzen master that didn't work it doesn't support it and i also tried using the ryzen controller a uh, third-party app that someone made for ryzen laptops that worked under 3000 series but this didn't work for the 4000 series so i'm guessing we'll have to wait for a few months or so for someone to make a software that you can overclock this or like a throttle stop uh, equivalent of this thing because on Intel, I use throttle stop to overclock laptops. Well, for the GPU, you can always use like MSI Afterburner or something to overclock it. And I even managed to overclock this with a plus 800 megahertz on the memory and a plus 170 megahertz on the GPU core, which results in a pretty good 3D Mark score, you know, with graphics points that's pretty high for GTX 1660 Ti, especially for a laptop like this. And you can see as well on the CPU side, on the physics test, it's also pretty dang good for a laptop it's an 8 core again this is very impressive so aside from just the cinebench that's very high the 3d mark scores are very high i can't test many games because i have to give it back it's my friend's laptop i just wanted to give you guys a video that shows how impressive this laptop is and i can really recommend this laptop for anyone looking for a gaming laptop at around the thousand dollar mark there's really nothing like it you can't get a faster processor on a laptop unless you go for the big bulky desktop replacement laptops with the core i9 uh 1098t hk or whatever the hell that is called but yeah even that uses so much more power while this one just sips power at like 45 watts and stays at 3.6 gigahertz under load which is extremely impressive with temperatures just in the 80s so asus has really put a lot of engineering efforts into this that's probably why they wanted to have an exclusive because they want people to, you know, get hyped by the Ryzen CPUs and buy their laptops for now. If you want to wait, you can wait for the other manufacturers to have options as well. But even if you buy this now, this is a very good laptop as is. It's engineered very well. The cooling system is pretty great. It's not that loud and it keeps it pretty cool. And the CPU can hold the boost clocks under load, which is, you know, that's pretty impressive. 3.6 years on 8 cores. That's kind of mind-blowing, especially compared to the first-gen Ryzen's where you're lucky to hit 3.9 gigahertz on an overclock on a desktop consuming like 200 watts or something it's only 45 watts at 3.6 and that's still above the base clock of the cpu which is only like 2.8 and the boost clock on this is 4.2 and it actually does hit that under light loads and even more at like 4.3 that's what i've seen so yeah maybe i've talked too much about this laptop but this is just really exciting to me that a laptop like this exists because for a lot of people you don't even need a desktop anymore when you have this much cpu horsepower the only reason you get a desktop is because if you need a lot of horsepower and this laptops give you everything you need maybe if you just need a very powerful gpu well that's one reason to get a desktop but for now if you want a powerful cpu 
you don't even need a desktop, just get a laptop like this one with the new Ryzen 4000 series. But yeah, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed this, and if you do, please leave a like. I might make more videos of this if my friend lets me or something, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope I made you guys have the decision to get the new Ryzen 4000 series laptops, because this is very impressive for, uh, as of right now. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, and please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more of my future videos. Thanks for watching.